Praise the Lord, everybody. Brother Stu here, back to Baba Videos. We acknowledge the Lord in all our ways, He may direct our path. In all things, He alone get the glory. Thank God for this opportunity. Excuse my voice, I've been dealing with a cold. But thank God, anyhow, um, it's getting better. I um, just want to do this quick video. Thanks be to God that um, came to my mind when I was in the washroom about Christian dating and boyfriend and girlfriend um, but I want to look at it from a, this particular per perspective um, a lot of Christians who are teenagers and profess church or profess Christians talking about courting or boyfriend and girlfriend when I say teenagers I'm not talking about an 18 year old or a 19 year old I'm talking about even younger than that and I'm thinking um, there's a terribly something terribly wrong with that and very misguided and and as a parent that's a fault of on us parents first of all if you're 13 between age 13 and 17 and if you have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you, I'm talking to believers now I'm not talking about somebody who don't who professing I'm talking about people who um, believe in water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and believe in the receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost because um, your priority if you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost your priority is to seek and wait for the for the promise of the of the Holy Spirit that is your priority and if you already have it as a teenager a young teenager your priority is to learn how to be a young man of God and a young woman of God and then after that you should be worrying about finishing graduate from high school. You shouldn't be because if you're court, this courting word, you know, we use it and not in the right way, and um, and talking. Oh, I'm talking to this. I'm talking to that one. Um, we use it in the wrong way. I'm not going to get into all the the definitions and breakdowns of the, the definitions, but my this video is to encourage you that you know. We have to prioritize better as 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 children of God. I mean, your priority is to to be rooted and grounded and understand who you are as a young man and as a young woman and not think about no boyfriend or girlfriend because if you're still in high school, you're clearly not ready for no marriage. You, you don't even know who you really are. And also, you may not even have yet learned of what the will of God is for your life. Now that's more specifically to, specifically to young men. Because in the Bible, Jesus they would Jesus talked to the to disciples and they were one of this the, the situations the, the, the disciples replied, said, Well, it's not good for for men to marry. And Jesus said, All men cannot receive that same. Then you know you heard about the you know, the breakdown of the different types of eunuchs. Some of eunuchs of men. Some have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of God. But all men cannot receive that same. Now you as a young man, you may not know if that is for you or not. And you're courting a sister or think you're ready to, to or you have a girlfriend and you're a teenager. You may not even know if that is um, what God wants for you. Now as for me, I, sp I, can, I talk a little bit personally. When I was young in the Lord, I had a lot of zeal. I said, yeah, I want to be like Paul. Paul was not married. He, he was fully committed to the work of the Lord. And, but, that was, but like the Word of God said, all men cannot receive that saying. And I'm one of those men who, who, who could not receive that saying. As you know, I have a wife and I have three children. Glory to God in the highest. So, but I had to learn that. that I, I had to understand that, you know, that... In a, so in that period of time, and you have a girlfriend or boyfriend, which you shouldn't, and um, it's about prioritizing, and that kind of that's just, this is kind of a re reprove and rebuke for us parents out there that we shouldn't even allow that. We should sit our young men and our young women, our our children down, like look, this is this is this should not be your priority because you're not nowhere near ready to even be thinking about marriage. 
you haven't even fit graduated from high school. Now you have some that are 18 and 19, they graduate from high school and and they may be, you know, and they're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and they, they get ready. You can't, it's not wrong, they are an adult. They are an adult. But I notice a problem amongst a lot of young people today is that the motivation. Oh Lord, I thank you. I don't even know where I where I left off. So many distractions. And I haven't done a video in so long, but thanks be to God anyhow. Um, yes, boyfriend and girlfriend and well, the problem that I see in a lot of churches is that a lot of young people are getting married. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm thinking that the priority I'm I'm saying that the priorities are are not aligned. And a lot of people are, you know, looking at the signs of the times and, 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 and like, oh, the Lord is soon to come. I want to get married so I can experience a man or I can experience a woman because I never experienced before. Okay. Okay. Marriage is honorable and the bed is under fire. So you're right, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But it's looking at what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 9. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. If you like, you are so, so thirsty, so thirsty, so hot, and a cold shower don't help, yes, it's better to marry than to burn and to, call, and to commit fornication. Because if you commit fornication, yes, God is a forgiving God and you repent sincerely and forsake that behavior and, and repent. He is just to forgive your fornication. But that, that shame is going to linger with you, especially if a child is born as a result of that sin. That child has no control over the circumstances of how he came to this world. Then you and that person may not be husband and wife. But you have to make a commitment to take care of that child, especially as a man. So you have to deal you will have to deal with that. That is going to be a reminder of your disobedience. So that shame is going to be right there before you. That reproach is going to be right there before you. So the Apostle Paul is saying to avoid that as a last result. If you hear the word of God, it says, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. It's a last resort. You just, if you're thinking, okay, you just want to marry somebody so you can experience intercourse for the first time. That's the reason for getting married. Okay, I don't know how long your marriage is going to work, but after you say I do, according to the word of God, that's it. You took an oath to death. You're bound. So that's, and that's why I want to encourage these young people, like, okay, you see the Lord soon to come, and you want to get married, because, oh, I want to get married and experience and this before Jesus comes. My God, your priority be, should be like, really? Your priority is to want to experience some fleshly, some, some, some um, temporary fleshly pleasure before Jesus comes, and not be thinking like, Lord, hallelujah to God, I want to be ready when he comes. No, I want to experience something natural before preparing for eternity. But like I said, as a last result, I don't want to sound like I'm contradicting myself because I'm not. But according to the word of God, but if they cannot contain, let them marry. That's a last resort. That's a last resort. And that's why a lot of young marriages don't last. And then you have these hypocrites out there talking about, oh, this is a new age, new day and time. You know, you can't, it's not, that's the old way. You know, you have to sample the goods. That's, that's a hypocrite. That's somebody that's calm. That's somebody who has no desire or not willing to 
do it the right way and do that which is pleasing in God's sight. Because the Bible says marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. So if you sample the goods before marriage, then your bed is defiled. You see, a hypocrite won't see it that way. Somebody who is carnal and, not, and, and don't have a desire for truth won't see it that way. They won't see it that way. As I, as, as, and on my end on a personal note, I had to learn the hard way. But thanks be to God, when, when, when you're ignorant and don't have knowledge and you go along with what, what, what you think is the cultural norm, yes, I talked to and I dated a lot of sisters, but none of us, not one, I was ever, ever intimate with, never. Thanks be to God. No goodness of my own. Not once. But yes, I dated and courted. And I had to learn that, you know what? That was not a priority. That should not have been a priority. My priority was the, because I got the Lord saved me at a young teen. I was 19. My priority was the, should have been to grow and learn and, and understand how to be a, a child of God and to be a man and focus on school. And getting a job and things like that, and have it. So I had to grow up. I what you call a late bloomer. And and so thanks be to God when the Lord had mercy on me and showed me like, hold on. You know, nah, you need you need to just you need to step away from all that. And when it was time, and when it was time for me to really court a wife, hallelujah to God. The Lord blessed me with a woman who never, who was never experienced. She was a chaste virgin. And she was actually in the Lord before me. And thanks be to God, her mom, who was a mother in the, in the Lord, taught her and trained her up in the right way, according to the Bible. So, and so she had those qualities. And, and also went during our courtship, we never went anywhere without a third party. You're like, why? Would y'all do that? Because the Bible says, let not your good be evil spoken of. And we wanted to maintain the integrity so that when we did walk down the aisle, nobody could say, oh, they did something. Or when we had our first child, oh, maybe they did something before they got married. And and, I'm, and I speak this um, out of gratitude, not out of pride. But I think Thank God, with no goodness of our own, that I can say that our lips never touch until the pastor said, you may kiss your bride, till we said, I do. Our lips never touch until then. And I take great consolation in that because that looking back, I can see that everything that was done during our official courtship, when I said, you know what, this young lady, I want to marry her so that to, to, to keep with the integrity, you know, we we went somewhere, and anywhere we went, we had a third party with us. And we never stayed in the same house overnight. Glory to God. I stayed at the pastor's house, and she stayed at home with her mom. And the only time we stayed, the first time we stayed together in the same house or same room was after we said, I do. Hallelujah to God. So now, thanks be to God that after Lord's willing, twelve this coming March be twelve years of marriage, we can share the grace of God to other young people. That yes, it can be done today. Hallelujah to God! Did we say we have didn't have temptations? Of course we did. We're human, but it can be done. Nobody can get up and say, oh, they did this and did that. Oh, that child, she was probably pregnant before they got married. And that. No, they can't say, nobody can say nothing like that. Nobody can say anything like that. So, but it's our responsibility as parents and leaders to really talk to these young people about this because this is a really big thing that's going around in the church today. And, you know, on a side note, you know, people, you know, you know, or oh, I have a boyfriend or girlfriend, and they could be older, not even teenagers, older. And then they say, oh, she's a good, she's a good church girl. She's really religious. You know, she loves God and everything. I'm like, okay, that's good. And we, and, and we live together. I'm like, huh? 
That don't, that don't, that's contradictory. I mean, okay, you living together. How you living together and y'all not married? How y'all performing? How y'all being intimate? And she's so religious and so godly. That's a contradiction. And if he's a man, if the, man, oh, the young sister, oh, he's a good guy. He's a, he loves God. He's really active in his church. And we've been going together for X amount of years. And we decided to, you know, whatever. I'm like, how spiritual is he? If he's really spiritual and really love God, he would never, not even attempt to or try to approach to go in another level with you until after marriage. And vice versa. Two people who really love God and serve God and have understanding of what God requires, out of respect for God and out of respect for each other, they will make that known up front that, hey, I like you. If it's the Lord's will for us to be together, but we, we have to maintain the integrity and the purity and, and, and purity. Because as, as our Father is the King, we are, we are royalty. Hallelujah to God. So, so in order not to bring shame to our Father the King, we have to behave like royalty and, and maintain the integrity and the purity of a royal family. Hallelujah to God. So they don't so, so there's no so nobody can't bring a reproach against the throne. Hallelujah to God. So hope this is a blessing to somebody. I didn't want it to be this long because I had to stop and come back and everything like that. So I hope you watch this video. That um we get our we have to get our priorities right. God bless you all. Peace be unto you.